this episode is definitely hits on the point of conflection. You know, it's like it's always those characters that I do admire. It's the ones where you know them more after they die. It reminds me of a character named Ruler. Well, there's your magical girl name. Isn't this anime slash line novel slash manga called Magical Girl Rating Project? And one of the characters that died in the series is named Ruler. Now, you get to know more about Ruler after she dies, in a way, but through different people and perspectives, in a way. For instance, when you first see her, she's this always this very mean, uptight, very strict control freak and stuff. And you're like, oh, goodness, thank goodness she's gone. But then after you see flashbacks and people talking about her and even some of her own past life, you see what kind of character she is, this ruler is. Where she's this woman in this business where she wants to improve it, but no one wants to listen to her because she's new and because she's a woman and stuff. So she has a hard time getting by. Then there's even times where there's these girls who are just background characters talking about her, saying how she's been missing and saying how she was always a very strict person, but had a very kind heart. Or even how the comrades that once betrayed her were having flashbacks where she even took the time to help one of them to fully understand the guidebook as she ran out and teach them how to do proper pronunciations and how to write certain words or even uplifting other people to have this high standard. And the more and more I understand about this character, the more I have sympathy for them, meaning they are the reasons of doing what they do. So it's always about perspective, in a way. Some people are the way they are for a certain reason, and you don't understand that because you're not living that person's life. This goes the same for Chigaki, in a way, you know. Um... You know how Nogi was so hard on being a leader, trying to be there for everybody, to be uplifting and, you know, to shine brightly. However, sometimes the light shines too bright when it casts a shadow. And Chigaki was that shadow. She was definitely that shadow. And let me just say that she would have defeated Nogi. Like, would have defeated Nogi. Nogi was probably holding back. Who knows? But Chigaki, she had her. She had her. <laughs> And she was going on and on again how she was just too, like, to learn to tone it down a bit. So you see, in a way, like I say, my theory of how this Nogi from the beginning of the war is the first Nogi. And she just reincarnates, you know, her will goes on to the next one. You know, they, this, the theory of how we reincarnate for us to, you know, better ourselves through the next life and so on and so forth. Like, for instance, say we're a heavy drinker and one life and then we vow to never drink again and so the next life we are not that much of a drinker anymore and then we improve ourselves throughout the cycle over and over again until our souls are completely cleansed and then we move on to whatever next stage that there is that's how reincarnation works in certain religions it is to learn from your past self and to better yourself as well you know our next stage our next test in a way so, anyways, it explains why the Nogi we all know and love now in the original Yuki Yuna series is very smart and is a good leader, but she's very understanding. She doesn't try to be so upstanding, bright, shining kind of character, but secretly pull someone from the side. Like, she'll jump around from the front, but when she sees something's going on, she slowly goes at it. You know, she'll bring, she'll take someone from the side, you know, where it's not in public or anything like that, where they're in private. She'll talk to them, and they they seem to understand her, and she understands them. And in a, a nice flow of communication, the Nogi from back then, the Wakaba Nogi that we're watching now, doesn't have that kind of trait. She's trying to have that trait that she never had before. People just see her as just this invincible, unbreakable, strong person who's given powers by the gods. So because of that, it's hard for people, she seems very unapproachable, in a way. Same with Chiaki, in a way. She wants someone that could be on her level, which was the unit of back then. They were very close friends. So because of that, she, to the very end, no, he didn't fully understand, but she did knew that she still cherished her, no matter what. So when she gave her that sacrifice in order to save Nogi, 
at the end and dies. Even saying, I still hate you, but I've always looked up to you. But maybe in a way, it's conflicted feelings. You know, she always looked up to her, but she hated how she could never be like her. How does she really have to be like Noe in order to be loved, to be idolized, to be some sense? And the only person she felt was truly close to her was that Yuna. So when she saw Yuna being closer to Nogi, she felt like, hey, that's the only person I truly care about being slipped away from me. So we may see it as selfishness, but to them it's desperation. These kind of people aren't good at making friends or making communication with others because of their life. So because of that, they're having a hard time even grasping acquaintances. So it's hard for them to make another friend, which is sad, you know? But because of that, I understand Chigaki very well. You know, so it was to the point where she wasn't even in the hero memorial at all. She, she wasn't even a hero's funeral because even though they say she died in battle, according to the media, the Taisha didn't see what she did was very honorable, which is true, but she still be a hero at the end. She saved Nogi, but her powers were taken away from her because the Shinju Sama saw what she was doing. So while you're fighting, the Shinju Sama still sees you what you're doing, and whether it's not. So this kind of a way had me also arguing with myself of what about what um you know what she did you know Lady Togo did from the first season where she was trying to destroy the Shinju Sama as well to end it all. Her were her powers taken away? Mm, no, but maybe it's because she wasn't going after her. Um, friends, but instead of going after Shinju Sama itself, maybe saying maybe it's best for all, all of humanity to die anyway. Who knows? But I was like, I was worrying about that. Well, anyways, they also go to her place and just finding how things just got worse. You know, they lost support from the Taisha since she was an honorable hero. Because you remember when Gen died from season two, her family was still able to be taken care of because she died an honorable hero's death. So because of that, the family continued to be taken care of even though she died. Shigaki was different. Since she was no longer an honorable hero, the family lost all support, and the husband just ran. He's like, nah, I ain't dealing with shit. <laughs> I can't pay for this. The other is the husband's going through. You know, the wife cheated on him, and he was forced to live with her because of that and she was already sick so you had to take care of her too while 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 she's sick and stuff and and now they have no money the daughter's dead and and the wife is still sick and like i'm not dealing with no more he's no longer tied down to those restrictions so he got the hell out of there man <laughs> i know it's messed up but at the same time it's like yo it's out of bail. <laughs> so the wife is in the hospital, you know. I guess it's irony. Who knows? Husband's probably somewhere going crazy, insane. Who knows? The wife is, I guess, slowly dying. So there goes the end of that depressing story. But what do you expect from the series? <laughs> now, with the press conference, I guess this is where Noe starts to learn, you know. Like I said, this story arc feels very political. The first arc that we saw in this season felt very like military-like. Now this one feels very political. They are heroes, but yet they always have to go to the press. There's always coverage, things being covered up. Um, people judging them, calling them liars or terrible, or they're not doing their jobs. It felt very political. And as is always usual, when there's very few match girls left, the biggest threat comes out. And that biggest threat is what's going to happen. So I'm guessing the next episode is going to be the closing end to this arc. And I know I keep saying episodes, this is the last time I say it. I really wish they gave this its own season, so arc, you know, like they did with the Washington series, where they gave them six episodes. If this was given six episodes, or probably even more, it would have been amazing. I'm saying there's so much we missed out on. Especially with the two, first two characters that died. We don't know nothing about them. <laughs> like, who are these two people? Nope, they just died. So anyways, that's, I guess, what it is, man. One more episode of this arc, and we'll see how it all ends. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, and you are a Yuki Yuno fan just like me, like, comment, subscribe, and of course, hit that bell icon. This is the background on Metamate. Signing out.